Good evening. My name is Dan Greenland. I'm the principal at Holland Middle School. Welcome. We uh, likely have parents from two middle schools and four elementary schools. And rather than waste your time with me having dialogue with you, I'd like to introduce Doug Taylor. He's the facility person at Council Rock, and he'll take it over from there. Thanks for coming again. Thank you. Good evening. Um, yes, well, we welcome Holland. We certainly also welcome uh, Richboro folks and anyone else in the district who's interested in what's happening here tonight. Oh, yeah, the camera's <laughs> killing me. So, uh, with me tonight is also uh, our representation from Dewey Engineering. There are construction managers uh, for this project. I have Warren Garricky, who's going to be speaking shortly, and Steve Garner, who's also going to be uh, presenting a bit tonight. Um, I have uh, a couple things to go over. Oh, damn. Overview of the project, so I'm going to provide a quick overview of the site, of the floor plans, to give you some idea of what exactly is happening here at the school. Um, after that, I'm going to turn it over to Warren, and he's going to speak more to Dewey Engineering, uh, what their approach to the community and neighbor concerns will be, how we'll manage this project through construction, minimizing the impact of what we're going to do on neighboring properties, and, and also to the staff and students in the building, most importantly. Um, the utility construction, what's happening, and we'll go over the building phasing, so you'll see exactly how we're going to work our way through this building as we renovate it in its entirety. And then a little bit of wrap-up, um, future periodic updates, and certainly at the end, any uh, comments, concerns, questions you may have, we'll be happy to open the floor and address anything that uh, you wish to discuss relative to this. Um, if we could try to hold off till the end, there's a chance that we'll answer questions that you have as we move through the, the presentation. But if not, keep notes and we'll make sure that we help you out. So a project overview, um, just to familiarize you with the site. Um, we have East Holland Road along the top, Buck Road off to the side here, Branch Drive, Old Jordan Drive. This is Hillcrest Elementary School. Over here we have the Holland Elementary School facility, or Holland Middle School facility. This project, as you'll see in the phasing portions of the uh, presentation, does not affect the Hillcrest Elementary School in any way. So we will not be working on their site. We will not be working near those students. All of this work will happen over at the Holland Middle School side only. So to, to give you a, a brief review of what the site will look like when this project is completed, um, again, Hillcrest Elementary School, this is the existing Holland Middle School, this is the gymnasium, the locker rooms, the uh, cafeteria that we're standing, that we're sitting in right now, the kitchen, mechanical room, this is the entrance that the bus drops the students off in the morning, and off to the, to the top here is where you're currently dropping off students um, and picking up students. The green area represents additions. The charge to the architect on this project was to give this building a sense of entry. As you know right now, it's very challenging, like me, the first time I came to try to find the main entrance was a bit um, challenging um, the first go around. So we wanted to give this building some identity, a sense of entry. We're creating that entry exactly where students are picked up and dropped off now. We will have a new district office area up in this corner, a canopy. Um, we will be renovating the gym. The additions will include music rooms, auditorium, auxiliary gym, fitness center, and six classrooms off the bottom of the project. From a site standpoint, we will be improving the pickup. Right now we have a lot of stacking that happens out on East Holland Road, which is certainly a, a concern of the township and ours. So one of the other uh, criteria was to create stacking internally to get the traffic off of the street. So we've done that by stretching that uh, pickup zone come through the lot, around, and then pick up drop off in this area, move back around and leave as you do. We'll have an ingress and two egress lanes, a right and a left turn, aligned with ramp. It will allow us to stack approximately 50 cars internally that won't sit on the street any longer, which will definitely um, help us uh, keep traffic moving on East Holland Road in the mornings, and uh, specifically in the mornings, I know. 
So the floor plans, to give you a quick update on the plans, the existing building is the area uh, in the yellowish color. Uh, we're going to have three teams on the ground level. A team is about 130 to 140 kids per team. So we'll have three teams on the ground level. An addition of classrooms off the bottom, six classrooms. All of the classrooms will be a more traditional type classroom, no more pie-shaped rooms. Um, all the rooms will be a more of a rectilinear type shape. We will do our best to get windows into each and every traditional type classroom we have. Certainly, class, there's certainly uh, certain classrooms inbound that will not. We have some science labs, some other classrooms that are inbound that will not have windows. But for the most part, anything in the building perimeter will, including where we currently have the brown metal facade. That's going to be removed and replaced with sections of brick and window systems around the entire perimeter. So all of that brown panel will come off and be replaced. On the ground level, we'll be building the new admin area. Uh, again, East Holland Road's at the top of the sheet. So a new admin area with a secure entry vestibule. We will have band, choral, music upstairs, stage, auditorium, auxiliary gym, fitness center. That's all in addition off to the, uh, to the left and at the bottom, the classroom, as I mentioned. Another piece of this is the large group instruction or learning stair. Actually, just beyond those flags, um, heading up, they'll be cutting up a large opening in the floor and putting in uh, a learning stair. There's utilitarian type stairs that go up each side and in the middle, uh, risers for students to gather and have a, another learning section within the building outside of a classroom. The second floor. Uh, most of the space off to the left are large volume spaces, so it's the upper section of the gym, the upper section of the auditorium, auxiliary gym, but we do have a balcony that serves the auditorium. It's also uh, can be divided into two large group instruction rooms, roughly 100, 120 per side, so we can use that space not only for uh, large events or performances in the auditorium, but also as teaching space we're not using the auditorium proper. Uh, we have music room, a couple classrooms up off the top as well. And all of the spaces in this area, the existing building, will be converted to more traditional fixed classroom spaces. The classrooms below are just single story, so they don't <coughs> extend to the upper level. The library will be renovated. The clear story windows will be maintained, so we'll still have lots of natural light in the library. Two computer labs that open into the library have the ability to be open or glass closed if we need privacy for those rooms. So there's flexible space there as well. Um, I think that covers most of it. We do have some mechanical mezzanine space. Um, a couple photos I'll show you. We have off this new entry, uh, I'll show you a rendering of it. I'll show you the auditorium. I'll show you the uh, learning stair as well. So this is a shot, it's a little dark, but this will be a surrendering of what the new auditorium will look like. This is the learning stair that goes in just beyond those flags, as I mentioned. You can see the library it is up on the top here beyond, and below is the cafeteria space that we're currently sitting in. The stairs are on either side, there's the utilitarian type of stairs just to get you vertical circulation from lower level to upper level, and in the middle are the learning stairs. From the lower level, at the new entrance, we have plenty of corridor space to bring large groups into the building. This is the administrative space off to the right. And then the upper level is up in this section. One final rendering. The sense of entry, as we talked about, will have some vertical elements outside to bring you to that entrance, the canopy, some things that will really help this building. You can see one of those elements through the glass outside. The entrance is down below, and this is the corridor system up above looking down into that new lobby space. So with that, I got the fun to show you some neat pictures and floor plans. I'm going to give the rest of it over to Warren Garrick, the Dewey Engineering. You all right? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Dewey Engineering has uh, done a couple projects for Council Rock. Uh, one is a Holland Elementary School and one is uh, Goodno. So we're not, we are not new to you. Um, and it always is great to have uh, a repeat client that trusts you in your judgment. Uh, one of the things that um, 
Dewey does differently than any other construction manager that I know of um, when hired as an owner's rep is they actually take the form of the owner. This is this will be Steve's house and my house throughout the entire process. And as I go through the next uh, number of slides, there's there's a number of elements that we think about. Um, while we're doing the phasing drawings, while we're assisting in some of the program things, while we're looking at how the whole thing is going to be come together. And the first one is always safety of students and staff. Whatever we think about students and staff safety is number one. The second one is the educational model. We know that we cannot disrupt the educational process. So those are the two primary ones that are, are surrounded throughout the whole thing. The third thing as a construction manager is we need to recognize that we have to give the contractor a big enough section of the building to make it worthwhile for them or else the bids are just unbelievably high. So we take those three elements and basically whatever we do and then uh, we start planning the whole process with the district, with Doug and, and, and with Dan and the administrators, how this whole thing is going to go. So we're going to run through all of that, but I just want you to remember that those are the elements um, that tie everything together for us. So our role basically, and Steve's going to talk a little bit more about it, but basically on the site, um, you know, we are always going to be concerned with dust control as far as the neighbor's point of view goes ahead. Temporary protection, that means, you know, protecting those places of the environment that will not be touched so there is special fencing that goes around that traffic control that means basically signage where the contractors coming in and out um, when are they coming in and out um, how is the bus flow happening where are the students coming in where's the emergency egress is going during this time so that's all part of the traffic control thing that we look at and then erosion sediment which is uh, basically through the bucks county conservation district as far as uh, any no sediments allowing to be uh, flowing off the site. So you'll see a number of different things coming up in the next few days relative to that. Um, again, uh, what I was talking about earlier about some of the roles that we have that we do, um, we are always sensitive and responsive to anything that happens. We are absolutely proactive. However, we understand that we're not perfect, so we can't be proactive all the time. So when concerns come in from the community, um, you know, they would have to go through Dan, and Dan will get a hold of us, and we, we will basically take care of them in a responsive way. Um, we believe that we will be always in communication with um, the school district um, about your concerns or about what's going on on the property. Um, we work in uh, strict um, enforcements of all of the drawings and specifications that have been given to us by the other professionals. Um, we're working closely with the the townships for all the codes and the and the approvals and, and the inspections that will happen throughout the role and here are the other team members that really do need to have an applause in this whole thing um, Doug and, and that whole uh, the school district team we had Schrader group or our architects Terraform our, our civil engineers and uh, a few other designers um, basically consolidate engineers are, are looking after the uh, MEP portion of it with that, I'm going to let Steve do a couple of slides here. <coughs> so, uh, as Warren said, we're, uh, we're charged with keeping everything running smoothly and uh, keeping everyone informed. Uh, one aspect is traffic, uh, site control. You know, we're going to have a construction uh, fence that will encompass the entire work site. Uh, with that, we need gates. Uh, Contractors will be assigned to go through gates um, with a um, fire wash and uh, appropriate signage for the contractors. So truck drivers, anyone entering or leaving the site knows where to be um, and where to park, where, to, uh, where their staging areas are, uh, conduct meetings, again, to keep everyone informed uh, on our end uh, what's going on on the web, weekly and daily basis. Uh, typical things you'll see on the site once it gets established is uh, erosion control measures, um, silt fencing, uh, tire wash, uh, we're going to keep mud off the streets, uh, we need to keep all our rock shoulders in place, uh, just the daily maintenance of an active construction site uh, to, to 
control the uh, mud and, and dust. Again, uh, more site control measures, uh, fencing. You can see we are, there are going to be a number of dumpsters, debris leaving the site uh, through trucks and through dumpsters, uh, tire cleaning, um, uh, chain link fences I mentioned just represents you know what you'll see on this site. What are the things that, uh, I'm just going to jump in. Sure. Uh, Steve was just talking about the, the, the debris that's happening uh, within the site. This is a LEED Gold Certified Project. <coughs> Anybody know what LEED stands for? How much more are you going to give No, yeah, I was talking to him. Oh, so it's, it's uh, Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design. So this district has been given a $2 million grant to get these LEED points. So you will have a very efficient, sustainable building. Part of that, there's a number of points that we have to get to get that gold certification. And one of them is in reference to construction debris. The point that we need to have is that 75% of the debris on this construction site needs to be recycled. So only 25% is allowed to go to a landfill. So that's one of the green elements that's going to be happening in the building. We'll touch on a couple of others that, that help us to get some of those lead points. Okay. And as we mentioned before, uh, site control, we're controlling the dust, um, and we're, we're constantly monitoring what's going on on site to make sure everything's uh, as it should be and with a minimum of disruption. And again, more site control measures it just kind of shows uh, what the site looks like now. Uh, we're expanding the existing parking lot. Uh, the football field will be relocated. And the chillers will also be relocated from the front of the building to the rear of the building. So on the chillers, I uh, just want to add, we're replacing the entire infrastructure of this facility. So all of the HVAC, the duct work all of the uh, electrical systems, plumbing, is all being replaced. The reason the chillers are being reused is that they were replaced about three years ago. Um, they have lots of useful life left in them. They're uh, efficient chillers, and the good news is that there's three. There's redundancy, and there's size to facilitate uh, the size of building that we're growing into. We're going, as a point of interest, we're going from about 140,000 square feet to about 185,000 square feet. So we're growing significantly here, um, which will match the same square footage of the new Newtown Middle School project. So there's um, parity between the two schools. Uh, totally construction. Uh, we're going to be getting a, a new water service, new electric service uh, into the building. Uh, picture in the upper left is a stormwater management system, an underground detention basin. Uh, which there are uh, three significant uh, systems going on this site. Um, again, we'll uh, arrange all the, the appropriate uh, township and local inspections for all that type of work, which is typical of all the work going on in the school. Um, uh, new water meter pit and, and smart meters, and uh, Warren can speak to that a little bit, as far as the smart meters and the uh, uh, building dashboard is going to be uh, Part of the project, a new fire protection service. The building will be sprinkled once the uh, project is complete. Uh, as we mentioned, the chiller relocation, and we're going to uh, remove the existing fuel tank that sits out front. Here's another lead point right there. It's called smart meters. Basically, if anybody's a, uh, well, if you look at your house, you have one meter that comes in for your electricity. You have a water meter, those kinds of things. Well, that's basically what's happened in, in a big in a big building as well. You usually just have one meter for electricity. So what the smart meters are doing, because there's a um, there's a learning component to lead. So in the learning component, the smart meters now will have uh, placed in a number of areas where we have electrical components, electrical um, switch gear in it. And so they will be broken down into, say, a section of lighting. So they can actually maybe see how much a lighting classroom is, is uh, actually taking for power consumption. There's also another component to that and the lighting in, within the classrooms, which is called daylight harvesting. So the daylight harvesting actually, um, 
what, what, what you need from a foot candle point of view is 55 foot candles to hit the surface of the learning area. So when you have um, outside classrooms with outside uh, glazing in it, you have a varying amount of sunlight that comes in and a varying level. So the fluorescent lights that will be in the classroom um, have a sensor on it, and that sensor is calibrated to 55 foot candles. So when in the morning time, uh, facing, facing east uh, classroom could be getting a, a, an enormous amount of sunlight, which then lowers the voltage that's going to the light, so it dims it. So you're saving energy by using the sunlight within the, within the component. So there's a whole lot of things that's going to be going on with lead and, and uh, educational processes. Let me just add also, we have, as part of the lead process, we have uh, a section of solar panels on this project. So we have 7% um, of the school's energy will be provided through our own solar panels that will be included as a part of the project. Again, part of the lead process. Everything they talked about ties into a dashboard system, and that dashboard system can be used as part of the educational process. So we can actually see on a dashboard um, the actual power consumption. We can take a look at how much electricity we're saving with the solar. Uh, it, it talks, it speaks to a lot of different components of the facility so the kids can benefit by um, the green building as well. Okay, so basically again, just stopping, stomping through the site and working through the building. Um, early on, we're gonna be stabilizing the site, um, getting the, the, uh, the construction pads ready to go. Um, again, looking at all of that circulation of pedestrians and um, vehicular um, situations with teachers and, and uh, students and how they're all approaching. And the engineered fill is one that we actually um, put in as an alternate. It basically is um, under a building, usually there is just compacted soil. Um, and when weather hits and it becomes uh, muddy and boggy, basically you shut down the construction site. Well, what we do is actually we take about 18 inches of stone off the bottom of that and put in this engineered stone fill compacted so that the contractors basically, one, have a clean site to work on all the time uh, and, it, and it prevents any kind of construction delays. So that's basically what that kind of phase is. Um, <coughs> all of the contractors on site um, have to go through numerous uh, clearances and basically they have to provide the district um, with their approved clearances for every employee that will be on site. We will get a spreadsheet very regularly from Doug's office as to who is approved to come on site. And once they're allowed on site, they will be given a tag similar to this. It might not be identical, but it's going to tell you that it's, a, it's got a number on it, and we're going to log them as a, as a number. It's going to say construction on it so that we know Every person on the site has a responsibility to that number. So there's a lot of things that can happen with it, but anybody that um, does not meet the criteria of any of that is not allowed on the site. So your children are always safe um, relative to that. Um, we're going to start by putting dust control measures in site where we're working inside. Uh, temporary partitions will be going up. Did any of you have um, students at, at uh, or uh, children at, at Goodno or Holland Elementary? A couple of you. So you're kind of familiar of what you may have seen it there with the temporary partitions that kind of split the corridors to, to, uh, to, to uh, you know, make sure that we've got an active construction site on one side and, and, the, and the student uh, body is safe on the other side. So we're going to start doing that pretty quickly. Um, that process I've talked about, environmental concerns before anything starts in this building, I believe probably or later this week or early next week. We have an environmental consultant that will do what's called baseline indoor air quality. So they will take what is samples from around the, the building at this point and give us a baseline of what kind of particulate values are in there or any other kinds of things that might be identifiable. So there, there are concerns for whatever reason, you know, relative to some of the construction, we have at least a baseline to say where we are. We haven't had any issues in the past, and I don't anticipate any in the future. So, Site phasing, <clears throat> this could be quite exciting or quite boring, however you look <laughs> at it. Um, on the bottom are the dates of when we start and when we finish, okay? So, 
We're going to start this next month and we're going to finish it. This is actually what you're going to see is when the kids are out of school. So we are already going to put in fencing. So you're going to see all of the where the construction area is going to be within this zone. We're going to start doing some parking lot work. We're start doing the, some of that uh, underground store management that Steve was talking about. We're going to get our staging area where our trailers are, our parking lot laydowns. There's some store management piping that needs to go there. Um, and basically for the building point of view, we're going to start right up in this corner, right over here by the entry, back by the cafeteria. Um, there's three rooms over there that is going to, are going to get converted into the tech ed area. And I'll go over that once I get out of the site. <clears throat> so between just, this is just the summer work of this year. Again, we've got that fence up. We've redirected the fence a little bit because now we're going to start our foundations on the additions. Um, so we've got fencing that actually surrounds us now, puts us in place, get that old uh, tank out of the way, and uh, then continue with the uh, inside of the building when we get there. I'll show you that in a minute. So from the school year of basically uh, this, this coming August through next June when, when it uh, stops, again, what we've done is we, we circulate our fence so that we are separated um, from school activities from construction activities. So it goes around here, we have some construction, we've got some uh, storage trailers for the district. Comes up to here because we're gonna be doing a renovation in this area and up at the front entry, uh, which will be the new front entry area and the new addition. So we're gonna lock ourselves in there and do a whole lot of work within that time period. We also are going to put in a temporary uh, access road. It's gonna take any emergency vehicles down into this area um, just so they have clean access. Next summer, summer of 17, um, again, we're just going to do some realignment of the fencing where we're going to be. Um, we're going to have some of the other parking lots done and we're going to realign up front so that we can uh, finish some other areas off. Um, but summertime for us is always a busy time because we've got utilities to put in. Um, this particular summer, we're putting a new electrical duct bank in and a whole new electrical service. So um, it's nice to have the, the students out of the way for at least two months so we can really uh, do some serious work on the outside. In August um, 18 to June 18, again, we just continue on, but we will always have a border fencing to protect us and to separate us um, from students and the staff and keep our work, our, our work areas safe. We're coming down to the end here, June 18, <coughs> August, we've got a couple of the front entries, then that new main entry that's going to be happening, we'll be finishing that off. The entry that was the new, with the old uh, main entry will be getting reconstructed as well. I'm going to try and walk you through the building. Um, so the first thing we're doing is up here. This is going to be the new tech ed area. There's three, I guess there's three classrooms in here right now. Um, so we're going to do the work in there between May and August so that this will be functioning in August or September when the kids come back. And we needed to do that because currently the tech ed area is here. Um, so we needed a place to really get to really get started. So we're going to be working on this. And then in July, when all the kids are out, um, and Doug has the area downloaded for us. We're going to start the renovation within this area square. Now what you're going to see for the most part is what we've tried to do is take two levels of where we're going to be working. So whatever we're, whatever we're doing down here on the first floor, we're doing up on the second floor as well. And that, that's for a lot of different reasons. One is for area, but it's also for noise um, and ac access and egress for us. Also one for a mechanical system. Correct. The existing mechanical unit serves multiple areas. In this building, it serves spaces that are stacked. So we're able to take a stacked zone. When we take that mechanical equipment out of commission, we're not going to affect other occupied areas. So it works well for that as well. What you see over on uh, the right side, and it was also in the uh, site phasing, is these are called our milestone dates. This is not the entire schedule. <coughs> What we take is we take those key critical path items within a certain area and we tell the contractor that they must start and they must finish by a certain date to make this thing work. And then they insert that into their schedule. So 
Um, within some of those scheduled times, um, we also recognize that there is PSSA testing. So one of the milestones is you cannot work during the day during that time. So they already know when they're bidding that this, between this time and this time, they're going to have to figure second shift. So we've got to, I think we've got everything covered. So anyways, we're going to start all of the uh, different renovate, uh, different additions that Doug was talking about uh, this coming summer. Another thing with the temporary um, lockers on the bottom because we lose the egress on the top. Up here. So you lose you, you lose the, uh, I can't remember, is this the girls locker room? I don't recall on the top, but it's one of the locker rooms. We lose the top locker room, which I think is the girls, so I think, you know, anyways, and, and so basically we're going to convert this locker room into both, um, they're going to be temporary partitions, different kinds of egresses, so that both the, the boys and the girls will be actually uh, changing in this area. So we needed to do that because of what we had to do up here with this other area. So, so this is just... The same phase, it's just the second floor, like I was saying, here's the same area that we were doing, so it's top and bottom. So in uh, in December of, of uh, 16, we're going to be finished basically with this area, top and bottom. District will move in and have that space. Um, we're still going to be working on all of the different additions that were going on, and now we've taken this kind of, this corner of the building. We're going to do that from January uh, to July of 17, so at the end of uh, at the start, um, September 17th, you'll have both of these areas, top and bottom, completed. That's just basically the same as what we were looking at before. Um, the summer of 17 is going to be very busy because we're going to um, put in the learning stair, which again, where, where Doug was talking about, that's going to be a, a job in itself. Then we're going to continue on. We're going to actually move the chillers over, I believe, um, and then keep continuing on with this. But we're also going to take over this back portion. Um, so we're going to take over the, the uh, kitchen cafeteria and the boiler room and do that kind of, uh, do, do all the renovation there. There will be a time in here. Um, so there will be a temporary dust protect protection along this wall. There will be a new a lineup. Uh, within this space for the feeding of the children. Um, so that's not going to be disruptive. There'll be some temporary hot, hot uh, plate lines that we've done before that have been pretty successful as well. July, uh, we're just taking the upper quadrant of this and walking through that again, just turning those into classrooms from what they were before. You can't actually see uh, some of it, but wherever there's the dot attached line, um, all of those areas there are those temporary partitions that I talked about earlier on. So we have those clearly identified on the drawing so the contractor knows exactly where to put those in. And then we're walking through close to the end here, um, finishing off the auditorium. We had already finished the, uh, the band and coral off, um, and now we're starting that whole the old front entrance because the office area is here but now it is actually moved over um, and getting that new secure entry over and the health suite finished by the by july of 18. and again there's uh, january 18 will be the, the top part of that building from january to july of 18. and we're just going to keep a couple of steps going on before we're going to finish this off it seems all so simple doesn't it um, <laughs> At the end, that last summer, again, it's going to be a busy summer. We're going to uh, renovate this area where we're at here in the cafeteria. We're going to redo the gym. It gets realigned. Uh, not new flooring. Basically, we're going to sand down and refinish it, um, get that main canopy finished, and the back entry, uh, reconvert that locker room into what it's supposed to be. So now you've got the both locker rooms operating. And then just the last little step, the same thing in that, in that summertime. Um, upstairs, we're going to be redoing the library and a couple of those classrooms next year. You will get um, periodic updates from us. Um, I am hoping um, from what you have heard from us that you have a little bit of a comfort level that we are that we are here for you and that we are here for the district. That you know your children will be safe. The neighborhood will not 
be under a dust cloud the entire time. Um, will there be an inconvenience or two? Yeah, there probably will be, but you know, we try to make those as minimal as possible. Um, again, as if we do have concerns along the way, you know, please let Dan know and he will, you know, he'll get it to us and we'll, we will certainly address those kinds of things. Um, and I think that's it, Doug. So, um, what I want to do is open the floor up to any questions, comments, concerns. As Warren said, for certain, you know, it's not a question of, you know, if there will be problems or not. Eventually something will you know, arise that we need to address. And one of the reasons Dewey Engineering is here, amongst many others, is that they are problem solvers. They are not finger pointers. They will work hard to come up with solutions and, and make things right as quickly as possible. That's why the contractors like working with Dewey. That's why we like working with them. And uh, I'm confident that this will be as smooth a, a process as possible, um, considering what we're undertaking. So we're working closely with staff and students, but at the same time, we're going to make sure we always have that safe separation, and we will quickly respond to any and all concerns and comments we receive from Dan as we go. So I'd like to open up. Yes. Uh, thanks for allowing us to talk today. Um, I live right over here in Pine Lawn, so I have a couple of questions. Um, first of all, will, will there be a dedicated hotline or website for us to go to with questions, comments, or concerns once the project gets going. And secondly, and more importantly, uh, the, the drainage, the underground uh, 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 container, where is that water going to go? Is it going to be designed so it can seep in, back into the ground, or is it going to go off into some uh, drainage retention basin? Sure. A great, really, really good questions. First and foremost, um, you will always be able to reach out to me. I'm the Director of Operational Services. So you will always be able to call me, uh, email me, call the office, and I will be responsive to whatever comments, concerns that you have. So I'm, I'm on the website and I'm always reachable. So please don't hesitate and between myself and or Dewey or the contractors, uh, administration will get you whatever answers we need to, to keep you informed. may not always like the answers, might not. But we will make sure that we're working together to keep, keep everyone as happy as possible. We want to be good neighbors. The answer to your uh, other question, best management practices are a part of uh, stormwater management. So we work closely with the township. There are a lot of calculations the civil engineer has prepared, um, run through, shared with the township, shared with the conservation district. They've been evaluated. So that water does two things. One is we had to do infiltration testing. To, to find areas of the site where water will actually go back into the ground, as you say, and some of it will be stored within that underground management system and then eventually diverted into the storm drainage that ties into the existing discharge point. We cannot, post construction, we cannot have any or all any effect um, on discharge. It cannot be at a higher flow rate than it was before we started construction. Um, but a better part of it will be infiltrated, and some will certainly um, tie into new stormwater management that leaves the site through existing storm drainage. Yes. So, Dewey, what are the big problems with construction? It's noise, and something that's a big distraction for education is noise. Right. Um, I heard you speak a little bit about going to PSSAs, but on a daily education of our children and when they're taking daily yeah, test quizzes every day, things like that, is there going to be a time period where it's no construction for learning? There will not be a time frame where there's no construction, but if they are um, performing um, extraordinary noisy you know, operations that are above and beyond what we would expect, um, generally we work Dewey works with the contractors and says, hey, you got to do it before 7.30, you got to do it after 2.45 or 3 o'clock, you know. So and some of the heaviest equipment and stuff is going to be on the second shift, please? Um, the second shift work is when there's definitely the plan, you know, the April PSSAs or whatever other um, testing that, that's no, scheduled. the PSSAs are geared for our, you know, <coughs> our daily learning of our 
our children and what really is going to impact their education with the daily right. day to day. So business. we'll have the partitions up. We will have some level of noise control, but certainly not entirely. There will be some noise next door. Um, it's not excessive. It's not constant. It's not. Um, it's we've had great success at Goodno and at Holland with very similar process. And if there were times where it was problematic for a class, there was a sen something sensitive, something happening that it was it was going to create an issue. Then we worked closely with the contractors and the relationship that Warren has, Steve, to say, hey, we need to, you know, it's 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 not working at this moment. You got to cease and desist and let's pick it back up. But to say that all the work's happening in second shift, no, that's not. We generally, I mean, it, it's generally through feedback from the instructors. I mean, we certainly could check decibels, but we, as, as a team, through the staff, through Dan, we get to know what's kind of an acceptable level of, of background noise and what is beyond acceptable. And when we hit those points, we work together. It's, there's not a specified, you know, decibel that we say once we exceed that, you know, but everybody works together. It's generally not a problem. And one of the things that, 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 that tried to do during that, you know, when I was discussing the phasing, is we tried to take a top and a bottom. So it's kind of eliminated two other sides to the, the, that possible noise issue. So we kind of got the three, you know, we got the two outside walls, and we got, you know, two inside walls with partitions, but at least there's nothing below it or above it, because that's where we're working. So there are, you know, that's how I was looking at it, to try to take a, a, a chunk of work that, um, you know, could hopefully, is there going to be noise? Yeah, but, you know, we, like Doug said, we have monitored it and um, we'll be on top of it. Like, you know, it's, uh, we just have to take a look and see what's going on. There will be a couple of times when it gets uh, a little noisy in there as far as the demo, but that heavy demo can be done at night. So we just have to assess what's going on. We're during the summertime, so sometimes, sometimes right. there's something else. Well, that's, that's, I think, my biggest concern is are you utilizing the time as well as you could? Yeah, we um, definitely do. Summer and for a second shift. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, there's big cutting holes in floors, making those penetrations, the big yeah. projects, those are summer projects. As much as we can do in the summer, we love. I mean, right. We take advantage of summer. Yeah. 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 Presumably. You know, again, I don't want to necessarily talk about redistricting and how all that works and looks, but yes, 2018 is when this building will be done and Newtown Middle School. Both of the buildings will be finished within two years. Both will wrap up the summer of 18, so the 18-19 school years, the students will. If they're not in the final year. Then we're going to fire Dewey. <laughs> no, I understood. We're never, we're never going to be in a place where students have places to live. There's always going to be homes as they shuffle around. But and we would know long before we get to August if we had an issue for some, you know, if some unforeseen conditions that no one could ever have anticipated, we would have developed some sort of plan um, to work through that. I don't anticipate that. Knock on wood, um, I've been very fortunate in my life to finish my projects on schedule. So I don't foresee that. Well, part of this, the phasing gates are part of the contract. So the contractor is obligated by contract to complete you know, various tasks in three phases. So we'll know. You know. We actually, we actually did finish slightly ahead. <laughs> but I loved everything you said. <laughs> Thank you.
we have we have environmental consultant that works directly for the district who will be involved throughout the whole process and we will be as we move around um, taking air samples and, and making sure that the things remain at or near or below the baseline that we um, tested for um, certainly areas that in the end because it's a lead gold building air quality is very important to achieve our points we have to make sure that the building um, does have very very clean air so we will be monitoring that as we go. Um, certainly, um, there are uh, some children that are more sensitive than others. If we encounter that, where some children are more sensitive, we'll work with Dan if they can be potentially shifted around the building because they have true, you know, health concerns. We would not want to put them, you know, in harm's knowingly in harm's way. So we would work with Dan um, if that. Got to be more. No. When well, does the redistricting start to happen? Is that is that out of your realm of? Yeah, it's okay. that's something that probably like better department. brought to a board meeting than here. Okay. But you know, again, I know that it's it's planned. Yes. Just one more small question. Uh, night nighttime work. Do you know hours? Yes. Well, exterior wise, there, there won't be much happening after four o'clock. Right. Outside, inside um, activities would likely be no later than 10 o'clock. But again, the impact of neighbors from inside work shouldn't be, shouldn't be great. Anything else? Really nice to see the turnout. I appreciate you all coming. If you come up with any more questions, you can email me. You can run them through Dan, however you want to bring them to me. No problem at all. I'd be happy to, to answer your questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.